So today's cup of Joe lesson, uh, I want to talk to you about the power of small adjustments. Teeny tiny adjustments, even micro adjustments, how these millimeters can make the difference sometimes. In fact, I believe Tony Robbins has a famous quote where he says something like most of us are just a millimeter away from success. Now, what, what does he mean by that? I mean, it's just just we're so close. If we just adjusted, tweaked, changed this one tiny thing, it can make all the difference in the world. I like to think of this as as a golf player, as someone who tries to play golf, I should say, the club head of a golf club. Now, there's a lot of, for, for all my golfers out there, you know what I'm talking about. There's so many things that can change the trajectory of a ball flight. The angle of that club head, the angle of that club head matters. You might think you're aimed straight. You might be set up straight. You might have the perfect swing. You might have the perfect speed. You might have everything just right. But if that club face, <laughs> if that club face hits the ball just slightly off, it's literally the difference between it going in the water or the woods or winding up straight on the fairway. And it affects the whole rest of your score. Just that little bit. So, I mean, a million millimeter difference. Sometimes it's just moves in this way or moves up or moves down. And many of our areas of business, life, our mental health, even our physical health, sometimes it's just the slightest adjustment that can make the difference. Many times we overthink it and we think it's got to be this huge adjustment, right? So if I'm out of shape, oh, I got to go change everything. I got to change the way I'm eating. I got to exercise. I got to do all these things. It just becomes overwhelming. We talk ourselves out of it. Instead of just doing one little minor adjustment, what if you just decided to park a little further when you pulled up to the store and walked a little bit further? Like adjustment because what I found is these micro adjustments change the way that we focus on things and then once we do that it's kind of a snowball effect so stay with me here I'm gonna lead you through some of this this is also uh, backed by recent studies for instance this book here the willpower instinct by Kelly McGonigal studies show that the more you try to suppress negative thoughts the more likely you are to become depressed now isn't that interesting studies show the more you try to suppress negative thoughts so I mean isn't that the point we're always taught to say you know stop thinking about that don't think that way stop thinking negative thoughts and it's kind of like you know the pink elephant don't think about a pink elephant don't think about a pink elephant don't think about a pink elephant what are you thinking about the pink elephant so knowing that what does that mean then it means we don't need to just try to suppress Press negative thoughts. We need to place them. And she goes on to prove this and says, actually, it's true. People with social anxiety, they focus more on social interactions than others. They're, they're just sitting there focusing on the negative, right? What if I appear awkward? What if they don't like me? What if they think this? What if I'm standing weird? What if I, what if, what if, you know, they're, they're focusing so much on the negative. It's like the, the equivalent of suppressing, trying to suppress negative thoughts. Nervous uh, test takers. It's proven that they focus more on their test results than others. Therefore, it makes them super nervous even depressed people they focus more on the negative thoughts than other people do I like to tell this story about this dog I had growing up who's a Dalmatian his name was Sparky and he looked a lot like this one of the things we used to do with him as a trick was we'd put a treat right on his nose and we wouldn't let him get it until we said like the magic word just like go get it you know change the voice tone or whatever now if he just sat there and focused on the treat he would disobey and just gobble it right up so the thing is he's not focusing on the treat here right he's focusing instead on obeying and listening for a command he's focusing on the process and that allows him to therefore operate under self-control and do what he knows he should do then he gets the reward so let's talk about this as a solution for many of the things we struggle with a solution for procrastination a solution for imposter syndrome a solution for just overall inaction beating ourselves up a solution for so many of the blocks that we feel remember picture that golf club just a little millimeter adjustment changing what we're focusing on doesn't have to be a huge adjustment just a slight adjustment so let's talk through this what can you change so change what we focus on. We know that to be true, right? So most of us are so concerned with the results, right? We're so concerned with the end result that we're after. 
What if instead we focus on just putting in the work? Just a very simple shift, very subtle shift. It's similar. Yes, we're still focusing on that project, but our main attention isn't focused on the negative because once we start thinking about the results, well, that could come, that gets intimidating, right? It has to be this big. It has to do this well. It has to sell this many copies instead of just focusing on putting in the work. You see the subtle shift there? How about don't focus on problems, focus on making progress despite them. So you're not having this wishful thinking that your problems don't exist yes you can acknowledge you have problems you have challenges you have roadblocks all right just acknowledge it and say okay yes there's this problem what can i do to make progress despite them what would my best self do to keep going even though there is this problem don't focus on what other people think focus on who you want to be all right so think about this in your social interactions and I have firsthand experience with this. I overthink a lot of social interactions, especially at a gathering where I'm like meeting new people. You know, I'm not comfortable. I'm, I'm thinking sometimes so much about how I want them to like me, how I, you know, what should I say? What if there's like dead space? What am I gonna fill it with? Um, it's so much so that, my gosh, I could probably backfire and I end up appearing awkward or, you know, just the whole thing flops and I'm a mess. Instead, when I just go into it thinking, who do I want to show up as? Who do I want to be? Do I want to be the confident person who can encourage people, make a difference in people's lives? Who do I want to show up as? When I'm focused on more about, you know, who I want to be and less about who are they and what do they think about me, changes the whole game. It's just a very minor shift, very subtle shift. It could change the whole social dynamic of an evening. So think through these. And again, mine might not be the same as yours, so think through what these would be for you. Focus less about doing it right, focus more about doing it at all. How many times have you talked yourself out of a project because you're like, well, I'm just not gonna be good enough at doing that. I'm not gonna be perfect at it. <laughs> Heck, my four-year-old daughter, poor thing, she's got some of her father's genetics. Even when she's coloring a picture, you know, she wants to stay in the lines. And if she gets outside the lines, she will literally say, that's not perfect. And then she'll just scribble all over it. <laughs> so I'm constantly going up to her going, it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, she will literally say, that's not perfect. She wants it to be perfect. Some of us just have this perfectionism tendency by nature. And so just knowing that, trying to just suppress it might not necessarily work. But if we just change our focus from just take pride in doing the thing at all, knowing that, yes, the only way to get any level of perfection is by practice. All right, don't focus on the failure, focus on success. You wouldn't believe how many people don't engage in the activities they need to because they fear failure. Some of them even fear success. But I almost didn't start this entire business that I'm here doing now. I wouldn't be here now if I focused on what if I failed? And instead I focused on, you know, what if I succeeded? Who could I help? Who might need this? Allow yourself to go there. What if this did work? Don't focus on the timing, focus on the task. How about the big, big one for Unchained Rider? Don't focus on the results, focus on the process. Isn't that one of our mantras here? We focus on showing up, we focus on the process, we set a 60 minute timer, and we do what we know we need to do. It doesn't matter what the results are, the results will come. But first, you've got to master the process. So think through a list of your own questions that could help you just shift that focus ever so slightly. It could help you get the leverage finally over perfectionism that you need. Also, it might be worth just catching your negative self-talk. And every time you catch yourself in that negative repeating cycle, think, you know what, what's a better question I could ask myself that would help me shift my focus ever so slightly into something more productive? It's these subtle little shifts when you get in the habit of making them, it can be quite life-changing. And just like a tiny shift in that club head hitting the ball, can mean the difference between ending up in the water and on the fairway, it can mean the difference for you and I between hitting our goals and winding up in that dreaded someday graveyard. So hopefully this helps to inspire you to come up with a list of your own questions, borrow the ones I gave you today, and monitor what it is you're focusing on. The next time you're feeling those negative thoughts in a negative situation, ask yourself, what am I focusing on? And what could I be focusing on instead that would change everything? So that's it for me in this lesson. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully it inspires you, at least gets you thinking. <laughs> but we gotta watch what we focus on. Big Unchained Rider Group Ug, virtual high fives all around. Give yourself that credit that is deserved because you showed up and you were part of the process. The results will come. Don't worry about that, they'll come. All right, until next time Unchained Riders, you know I'll be cheering for y'all. Bye guys.